Hey guys, Dan here. I'm going to show you how to change your Power Rangers communicator into a into an Apple Watch band. All right, so this is the tools that you'll need to turn your um, Power Rangers communicator into a awesome watch band. Um, I will have all the files for the watch faces in the description of the video, so if you guys want them, um, you guys could uh, use them. Well, anyway, um, you're going to need your wristband. Uh, I obviously don't have a gold uh, Apple Watch, so uh, I got a uh, just a case for that to make it look gold. Um, now, this will work with any smartwatch. You just need the right uh, watch band adapter for it. Uh, I'll post a couple of uh, the ones I use for the Apple Watches, but um, check forums and uh, other things like that for your own smartwatch to see what watch band adjusters people use. Um, I'll have some information in the description and on the video. Um, this is a little watch pin remover. So you see if you uh, turn it, all it does is push a pin into the watch and removes the pin on the link. And then this is for the little spring pins that we're going to be using for the watch uh, band, which just makes them super easy to put in and out. It's just a little fork that you use to kind of push the pins in and out. All right, so now that we have that all set aside, let's get started with the rock, with the watch band. Now, the easiest way I find this to work is um, if I put these adjusters onto the watch, and then um, that's when I'll put the pins in on the watch, uh, just because the weight of the watch gives you a nice little working area. But first, let's get these um, these bands off of the face. So we'll move everything off to the side because we don't need any of this for now. And all we're going to be doing is removing these wristbands, uh, these watch bands from the uh, communicator. So what this tool does is you just line up the little uh, pinhole over here. Let me see if I can get this in frame for you guys. Let me see. I'm trying to get this in focus for you. There we go. So we want to push this little pin out. So what we do is we take this tool that has that same little size pin. We're going to line it up and we're just going to advance until we put pressure on that pin. Uh, let's see, I'm doing this while looking through a lens finder. So this is very hard to do, but okay. So I'm pushing in, I believe. Let me take a look with my real eyes. I'm a little off. There we go. We're in. And what, this comes with a little slot on this side. Sorry about that. That when we advance, we should see the pin coming out. So I'm going to start advancing now. You can see the pin is coming out. So I've advanced as far as I can. So I'm going to back up. Good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my hand to just pull the pin out. Uh, we can leave this to the side. I would recommend holding on to this just in case you ever want to convert it back. You're going to need that pin again. So I'm just going to push this over to the side for now. And we're going to do the same thing on the bottom. So now we have the detached head. You can put this over to the side. Keep this for the future because if you ever want to cosplay and not have your uh, smartwatch, uh, you're going to want to put this head back on. So um, I would recommend uh, holding on to that, putting it in a little baggie or something. I have a little watch baggie with all the heads on it. Um, now, next thing that you might need to do is um, size this band to you. And where, how you do that is by removing links. Um, so I have to remove one link because I have the same watch band before. So I know for my wrist, I need to remove one of these, which means I have to take out two of these pins, 
put this link on this one and put a new pin in. Um, so I'm gonna go through that process now. If you don't need to do this and this fits perfectly for you, I'm gonna put a uh, timestamp up on the page right now. You can just skip to that timestamp and move on to putting the adapters on. For everybody else, this is how I remove uh, the link and replace it with a new one. Um, so again, we have to push the pins out. So I really recommend getting this pin pushing tool because it just makes the job so much easier once you find the direction that you need to push the pin. And of course, which it looks like it's probably this direction. Yeah. You, you feel like a swing when you're turning it, it pushes through. Um, if it's not gonna go, you're just gonna feel way too much resistance. And you're gonna know like, okay, this is gonna break something, I'm not doing this. So I will need that pin for, I will need that head for later. There we go. I just wanna make sure there's a spot for the pin to go through. There it is. And we are backing back out again. So we'll put that over the side. We won't be using that anymore. So there's our pin. This is our extra link. If you'll need an extra link in the future or if one gets damaged or something, you have an extra link now. And now we're going to put our clasp and this one together. So what we want to do is you see that there is a, uh, a fat side to the pin and a thinner side. We're going to insert the thinner side through. And what we have to do is get um, this link. It's kind of like threading a, uh, a needle because that's exactly what it is. So we got it through both links, through and through. And uh, we just have to advance this little bit in. So what I like to do is I like to use, again, our pin pusher just to push it in the extra couple of millimeters. This is a little bit harder to line up, but remember for this, we don't have to go through. We just have to push it to the edge. A little fiddly to get it to line up perfect. But uh, you can get it. There we go, that, that was a little loose too. That's what was making it a little bit harder. we go we're pushed in that could go in a little bit further so let me just try to go a little bit more there we go no I didn't do it enough basically you just want to make this as flush as you can just so like you know the metal doesn't snag on like a thread or something or remove some arm hair there you go, that is pretty flush. I'm very happy with that result. Um, so now uh, I'm done with the link adjustment. Uh, if you guys need to remove more or uh, not do it at all, that's all up to you. Now we're going to go on to uh, putting the adapters on. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna use my watch just as a weight for the adapters. So I'm gonna remove my watch bands and now I just have my watch head. Uh, let's make it gold right now. All right, so I got this little fake gold, like silicone adapter, uh, uh, protector, whatever you want to call it, for my watch. It goes on not the easiest, but um, it does stretch over. Uh, it's a little janky sometimes, but this is something that's only going to get used when I'm using the gold band which uh, is probably gonna be a little bit rarer than the other colors. Um, yeah, so that, that went on nice, and I think that looks pretty good, except for the wheel. The adapters will be into the watch, so you will be able to notice that it's silver, except for the two side pieces over there. Um, so for the Apple Watch, I have these gold adapters. Now, while these aren't shiny on the sides, they are, and that's all that matters because you won't see the 
these parts you're not going to see on the uh, when it's inside the watch. You're only going to see the sides. And you can see the sides are really nice and shiny. Um, and again, these are pretty cheap. I think these are like ten bucks. And um, the way these work are really great because they're little spring pins. So you push in one side and it removes the pin. And then when you want to slide on a different thing, all you do is, you know, slide the pin on and uh, it's, it's probably easier if I just show you guys exactly how to do it. Now the way these go on is the silver bit that's on these goes into the watch. And they go in one way. So I have a 50-50 shot of picking the correct way. There we go. And the other adapter. Now I like to, you, you don't have to put them into the watch to do this. You can do this out or without the watch. But I like to put them on the watch because I feel like the watch, it gives a nice little weight. Uh, it moves around less. And we're gonna take our little pick tool over here. And we're just gonna come over here, put the fork on the pin and push down. And that's gonna remove the pin. There we go. Now, I like to have this part, the part without the clasp, the part with just the bar, on the top of my watch. So that means I'm going to be putting this part on the bottom. So what we're going to do is we are going to take our pin and we are going to put it into our watch band. all the way through just like that now let me see if i can get this on camera for you guys it's a little fit it looks a little fiddly but this is going to be very easy what i'm going to do is i'm going to take the part that doesn't have the little gap and i'm going to push the pin into the hole right there now we're almost in right i'm into i'm in this hole right here now I'm not. It's a little fiddly, but once I'm in, I'm in. I'm going to take my tool. I'm going to use the little fork that's on it to help retract the pin into the watch band and push it in. Now that it's between, it's in. See, that's not going anywhere. And what I can do is I can even remove it. And now it's in there. We can put it back on. Now, this gold one is actually a little bit bigger than the one I have on my silver one because my silver one doesn't go back and forth like this. But I think once I put it on and start wearing it, it's not gonna be sliding back and forth because it's a pretty good fit on me. It, it fits almost perfectly. So um, maybe get slightly smaller bands. I thought I ordered the same size as the silver ones, but um, I guess I didn't. Um, if that annoys you, um, I guess we're gonna have to just look for a smaller gold one. The ones I have for my silver are absolutely perfect. It does not do this. But anyway, we're gonna move on to the top now. And it's the same deal. We have this little fork. Now let's see if you can see that. And we're just going to use that little fork to push this little part in. And that removes the pin. Now we're going to take our pin, put it into the watch band until it gets through. And we're going to place it into the watch. Now that it's in the watch, we're going to use our little fork again to push the, this pin into the watch. And then once it's almost in, we can kind of let go and guide it into the hole inside of the watch. Sorry if that looked a little fiddly, but it's actually really easy. It's almost just like how a toilet paper roll works where it's a spring loaded, you get it into the two holes and then you let it open up the same idea so it's super simple to do 
Now we only have a couple other things to do. I have to put my pin into this watch, so I'm going to put this on. I'll show you on camera, me putting it on, because I think it did come out pretty nice. Well, it does not want to focus. Almost there. All I have to do is change the clock face. So let me put my pin in. And then we'll swipe over to the side. I think I photoshopped a decent color gold. It's not exact, but a pretty decent color gold onto here. Now, I think that that looks absolutely awesome. Uh, I'm going to definitely be rocking this when uh, I need to rock the gold. Um, <laughs> looks amazing. And then it's just as simple as swapping them out and putting these ones on. These ones, again, these ones are less, have less give back and forth. These are closer, more exact size than the gold ones are. Um, again, I will have links to everything in the description. So if you have any questions about uh, how to do this, the process, uh, what tools they are, it's gonna be down in the description. Uh, and also the pictures for the watch faces will also be in the description. So. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. See, we now have connection with Zordon and Alpha in the command center. This is more. They respond to tactile pressure followed by auditory stimulus. So what you?